Hey, thanks for watching Joyce's YouTube channel. We pray you find encouragement and exactly what you're looking for here. Did you know that these videos that you watch for free are available with the help of our Joyce Meyer Ministries partners? As a result, people are learning how to apply God's word to their lives and come out of some really dark places. If God's using these teachings to bring you closer to Him, let me encourage you to join us and become a partner today. Join the team that is sending His Word around the world. You can do big things together with us. Scan our QR code now and begin sharing the love and knowledge of Jesus Christ everywhere. This program is made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Maybe we should study the stops of Jesus. Maybe we should look more at the things that he stopped to do because they're the kind of things that he wants us to do. Jesus was interruptible. I'm Joyce Meyer and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. I'm just going to be up front with you. Joyce's message today is going to challenge you to the core. So watch now as she encourages all of us to get out there and start doing what we say we believe. I wanna share with you a message tonight that is, it's been one that's been very important to me and something that has really helped me in my life, and I hope that it will help you. It has a funny little title, it's called Don't Disturb Me. You might be thinking, well, what in the world is that about? Well, you know, I think a large majority of people in the world today, that's just their attitude. I'm busy, I'm going somewhere, I've got my plan, I've got my thing, I've got my day figured out, and so if you got a problem, don't bother me with it. Well, you know, Jesus wasn't like that. Now, we stay in a lot of hotels, and in hotels, they always leave us one of these to put on our door. But today, people are wearing them on their bodies. Now, I'll just wear this around for a little bit just so you get the picture. We have such a huge opportunity in front of us today but we're gonna to have to get more like Jesus and a lot less like a carnal, selfish, self-centered Christian who just goes to church and thinks that's all there is to it. You know, just because you go to church, that doesn't make you a Christian. I could go home and sit in my garage all night and it wouldn't make me a car. Jesus said, I want you to go and bear fruit. So maybe I'd just like to ask you tonight to think a little bit this next week about what kind of fruit are you bearing in your life? Are you coming here and just being fed and you love that? You love for somebody else to do all the work and dig out all the messages and just feed you all the good stuff, but what are you doing with it? I hope a lot, I'm not accusing anybody. I hope that every message you hear, you hear it with the intent that you're going to do something with it. Now, we're gonna use the parable of the Good Samaritan tonight, and I want you to listen to it like maybe you've never heard it before. There was a Pharisee and he said to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor even as you love yourself. I say those two scriptures out loud every morning because that's what God has called us to do, is to love him and to love people. Amen? And we throw that word around so much, we love ice cream, we love God, and sometimes we don't know what the difference is, but we have to learn how to love the way God wants us to love, and I'll just throw this out, because I like to say this at some point in every message I preach. 
If you're going to love people, you have to be ready to be very generous with forgiveness. And I just wonder how many people are here tonight that are mad at somebody. Nobody? Okay, that's good. <laughs> are offended. Hmm. Christians give the devil more ground in their life through unforgiveness than through any other thing. I'm going to say it again. Christians give the devil more ground in their lives through unforgiveness than through any other thing. Let's remember the Lord's Prayer. Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, do we really want him to forgive us the way we forgive other people? We got to be quick to forgive. Hard to offend. Not touchy. So he said, well, Lord, I've been doing that since my youth. But in order to justify himself, he said, so who is my neighbor? Well, that's a good question to ask. Who is my neighbor? Anyway, is it the person that lives next door? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. Now, I want you to use your imagination, and I want you to kind of see this story and not just listen to it. This man's walking down the street. All of a sudden, he gets attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and left, leaving him half dead. So, they took his clothes, they beat him up. He was bloody. He must have took, taken a very hard beating because they said he was half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Uh-oh. Have you ever been going down an aisle in church and you saw somebody that you knew if they stopped you, you were going to be in for a long story that you didn't want to hear? <laughs> and so you passed by on the other side? Come on now. <laughs> Sometimes we avoid those people that are needy because we don't want them pulling on us. We don't want to be disturbed. We're here to go to church. We're here to be spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> A priest, you know, I think he might have been on his way to church. And that's why he was in such a hurry. And so he didn't have time to mess with this guy who was bloody and beaten up and half dead. So he just, somebody else can do that. And he crossed the street and passed by him. Then a Levite came by. And when he saw the man, he also passed by on the other side of the street. And Levites were part of the Jewish priesthood. They did all different kinds of jobs. And so this also was a religious man. I'm sure he went to synagogue and he followed all the rules and regulations. But, you know, Jesus really got onto the Pharisees because he said, you follow all the rules and the regulations, but you won't lift a finger to help anybody. And then there was a Samaritan. Now, you know, the Samaritans, the Jews hated the Samaritans. You know, it's kind of interesting to me because a lot of times real religious people actually hate the people that are out doing something to make a difference in the world. I've had more judgment and criticism from people that are doing nothing. Religious people are not always very nice, and we're supposed to be nice. Matter of fact, they hated the Samaritans so bad that they wouldn't even go through Samaria. They didn't want anything to do with it. Well, the Samaritans believed that Judaism 
and the Jewish Torah had been corrupted over time, and they no longer followed the Ten Commandments or all the rules and regulations. But I just wonder if we only had two choices, if God had two choices, take somebody that follows all the rules and regulations but never lifts a finger to help anybody, or somebody who maybe doesn't follow all the rules and regulations but they really help a lot of people. I just wonder which one he'd pick. Now, I'm not saying he'd take an unbeliever over a believer, but Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. How many of you would say Jesus is your Lord? Okay, well then, let me tell you two words that you can never say because they, never, they do not go together, and that's no, Lord. <laughs> you can say yes, Lord, but you can't say no, Lord, because if you say no, then he's not your Lord. Because if he's our Lord, then the only thing we can say is yes, Lord. <laughs> Let's practice. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, all the miracles that Jesus did, he was interrupted to do them. <laughs> he was on his way somewhere. He was doing something. He was busy. And I've got all the references here. I don't have time to read them all. But I am going to just go back here and give you just a few of the little scenarios of what was going on. And you just think about them real quick. Jesus came down from the mountainside and large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt down before him. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. So he stopped what he was doing and Cleanse the leper. Then when he entered Capernaum, a centurion came up to him asking for help. And so he stopped and helped him. When Jesus came to Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever. So he stopped and healed her. When evening came, there were many who were demon-possessed. And he stopped and cast the devils out. There was a storm that came up when he was in the boat with the disciples and he got up from his nap and stopped the storm. He healed crippled people, paralyzed people, demon-possessed people, raised a man's daughter who had just died. And every, every one of these you, you can't find one that says Jesus was sitting around looking for something to do. <laughs> he was going somewhere. <laughs> he was doing something, but he didn't pass by on the other side of the road. He stopped. Everybody say, he stopped. Stop. Say it again. He stopped. Stop. And he helped them, and then he went back to what he was doing. You know, we talk about the steps of Jesus. There was a big movement for a long time, like following the steps of Jesus. And, but maybe we should study the stops of Jesus. Maybe we should look more at the things that he stopped to do. Because they're the kind of things that he wants us to do. Jesus was interruptible. And we need to be that way too. So I remember going to a doctor's office with my son who'd broken his arm and he was going to get the cast off. And I was waiting in the outer room and there was an elderly man there who had fallen on the ice and had broken his leg. And he wanted to tell me all about it. I mean, like all about it. As a matter of fact, he was willing to tell me two or three or four times all about it. Well, I had my Bible and I actually prayed that God would make the man shut up. <laughs> so 
so I could read my Bible. Come on. Because I just didn't want to mess with him. I had a plan. I had my do not disturb sign on. And all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he said, if that was Billy Graham, would you listen to him? I thought, yeah. Yeah. And then he said, why? Well, because I would probably think maybe he could do something for me, or at least I'd have a good story to tell. Ooh, I went to the doctor's office today, and Billy Graham was there, and we talked for 15 minutes. See, we, we have to get beyond doing things for people only if it's going to get us something. Do you have any idea? I mean, I try to imagine this, but I can't. Do you have any idea what would happen if every person on the planet who calls themselves a Christian would go out into the world and help just one person, we'll just say even one a week? What would happen? It would be phenomenal. We are ambassadors for Christ. And the Amplified Bible says his personal representatives, and now listen to this, and that he is making his appeal to the world through you. Well, that's amazing. But I, I've, got a, I, I've come a little ways in 45 years. That's a good thing. Got a long way to go, but I've come a ways in 45 years. And so, this might have been four, four or five years ago, I was in Utah and I stopped at a Starbucks and I asked if, I could, if the girl could make me a, a pour over. I'm like a coffee snob. It's got to be a certain way or I don't want it. And... Uh, I don't like it too strong, don't like it too weak. No. She says, oh, we, we've got this new coffee press. Let me make you a cup of coffee with that. And I thought, no, nope. coffee presses are always too strong for me. I just want a pour over. Well, just to tell you, this girl was, I mean, everywhere where you could have a tattoo or some kind of metal hanging on you, she had it, and her hair was about four different colors. So it wouldn't have been my person to hang out with, you know. She might have been one of the ones that I would have crossed over on the other side of the street. <laughs> you know, we're not too good at messing with people that aren't like us. So the girl says to me, if you don't like this, I will make you anything else in the store that you want. And then she's just talking, and she said, I love this thing. She said, I'm, I'm trying to save enough money that I can buy myself one. Well, this coffee press was $150, and I got my coffee, and sure enough, it was really good, and so I decided to buy one of the presses, and I walked out of the store and just took a few steps, and then I heard the Lord speak in my heart, buy her one of those. I don't know this lady. Who wants to feel like a fool? And so, but you can't say no, Lord. Because that don't go together. Amen. That doesn't work. I kind of feel for you guys because after you leave here tonight, you're going to have to live a different way. So, you know, we always say we, we're willing to be a fool for Christ, but are we really? <laughs> you can't care what people think, especially not if you're going to love strangers. And I don't know if you know it or not, but there's some really strong stuff in the Bible about how to treat strangers. And so I went back, and she was waiting on somebody, so I waited for her, and I said, can I, can I talk to you a minute? So she came over, and I said, um, 
I, I want to buy you one of those presses. Oh, no, 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 you know, that's always what you get first. No, 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 I said, yeah, I, I really feel like God put it in my heart to buy you one of those presses. Well, she started to cry. She's making a scene, and you know, everybody always makes a scene. And I don't want anybody to make a scene. I just want to buy the coffee press. God is so amazing. I bought her the coffee press, and then maybe an hour later, I was on a different floor in a different store in the bathroom. I'm going out of the bathroom, and she's coming in. And she looked at me and she said, can you tell me why are you the kindest person in the world? Now, obviously I'm not the kindest person in the world, but apparently I was the one who showed her kindness. And I don't think we realize how hungry people in the world are for just a little bit of kindness. Just a little bit. And, and it doesn't cost you that much. You just, you just got to be like the Samaritan. You got to be willing to stop. And uh, I said, well, I'm a Christian and God's blessed my life so much and I just wanted to bless you. And she said, well, that really says a lot to me because she said, I've been kind of mad at the man upstairs. I said, why? And she said, well, my mother died with cancer several years ago, and I just have not been in a good place with God since then. Now, you know, I don't know what went on with her life after that, but maybe I'll see her in heaven. And it might not be because of the coffee press, I might have just been one little, one little piece of what God was trying to do in her life. But the Bible tells us to do things for people who can't do anything back for us. We got to be so careful about our motives and make sure that we're not just doing things for people with an expectation of them doing something back for us. That's why the word says to do what you do in secret. Now that doesn't mean that you can always do that, but we do have to examine our hearts and make sure that when we do things for people, we're not just trying to kind of covertly buy something. I'm gonna challenge you to pray every morning, God, would you put somebody in my path today that I can help? How many of you would be willing to do that? Okay, now you stuck your hand up there and God saw it. <laughs> Amen? And you can't be picky and choosy. <laughs> and remember, there's none of this no, Lord, that doesn't work. You can't be selective about what God asks you to do.